Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com and today we're going to be discussing when you should play satellites. If you know me and you've studied my work, you know that I generally do not recommend that you play satellites. You may say, why? That's how you're going to win your way into a big tournament. Well, let's do a little bit of back of the envelope math and discuss it. So let's say you're a good satellite player. Normally you're gonna cash one in 10, which is gonna be the case in you know most satellites where let's say you buy in for $1,000 and you win your way into a $10,000 buy-in tournament. In that scenario, if you're good, you may cash that satellite, let's say one in eight times. That's gonna give you a reasonable ROI. You're gonna find that you know sometimes you're playing in satellites that are softer, maybe you cash one in seven times or one in six times. Some people think that they are absolutely crushing them and they cash every time. Obviously you don't. Don't be an egomaniac and be realistic. So if you are one in eight to cash a satellite if you're good, and you're one in eight to cash the main event you win your way into, well now you are one in eight times one in eight to cash in both, which comes out to one in 64. That means that you are going to get money out after buying into a satellite one in 64 times. That's not very often. If you play a satellite every week, in live poker, that means you're going to get one cash per year. That's not a whole lot. <laughs> and usually, even then, it will be for a minimum cash because most of the time when you cash in a tournament, it is for the minimum. So that's going to be about 15 times your initial satellite buy-in. So you're going to put in, let's say, 60 units, and you're going to get back 15 for a nice minus 75% ROI. Even if you're a good satellite player, and let's say you somehow double this, right? You cash for 30 buy-ins. Well, if you, again, play one satellite per year in live poker, that's going to result in you putting in 64 or 52 or whatever, getting back about 30, 40, and another 40-ish percent loss. So playing satellites will lead to tons of variance, usually in the downward direction. And I do not want my students experiencing infinitely long downward direction downswings. That is going to demoralize you. It's not going to be fun. And even if you are profiting in these games, unless you're playing an incredibly high volume, it's not going to work out well for you in the long run because you're just, well, you're not putting in the volume and you just don't cash very often. Of course, sometimes you're going to get lucky. Sometimes you're in a spike, but I'm not making on instances that happen very, very rarely. Um, also, it is worth mentioning that usually if you play a lot of satellites, as a lot of live poker players especially do, they are usually not all that good at the next main event. So what I mean by that is if you spend all of your time playing and studying satellites, quite often you are lacking the fundamental skills to play multi-table tournaments because they are very different games. In a satellite, you're trying to get in the top 10% of the field or sometimes the top 5%, sometimes the top 20%, whatever, depending on the exact structure. But in a multi-table tournament, you're really just trying to get in like the top 2% of the field, right? And that leads to a very, very different strategy. And you're going to find that most people specialize in one game or the other. And if you specialize in satellites, then you try to take those skills to live tournaments. It's not going to work out. Also, well, live tournaments, into uh, the main event, that's not going to work out. Also, let's say you're bankrolled for $1,000 satellites, but you're not bankrolled for $10,000 buy-in main events. Well, you're probably going to be playing in games that you're not quite comfortable in when you do win your way into the main event. And also, you're going to be playing against players who are way tougher than you were used to playing against. So a lot of stuff leads to you not really wanting to play satellites. However, the other day I was playing online. I was I streamed the whole day for Poker Coaching members. Go to PokerCoaching.com. You can find that stream there. And I played three satellites and I won all three. We won three $2,500 buy-in seats online. And I got a few people sending me messages saying, I thought you said don't play satellites. Well, they clearly read the 140-character uh, Twitter post. They did not read the full explanation. So let's discuss the few times when you should play satellites. The first is when you don't care about your bankroll. If that's the case, do whatever you want. And you may say, well, of course I care about my bankroll. Most people who play poker, especially if you play recreationally, actually do not care. What I mean by that is that they are willing to play satellites to give themselves a chance to win a trip to a sweet location or you know, parlay, turn a little bit of money into a lot of money. They are gambling and they are playing for experiences. And there's nothing wrong with gambling and playing for experiences. Just realize that you're rarely going to actually win and that's gonna result in you having essentially 
little to no chance of actually being able to succeed long term. The problem for a lot of people who are you know, gambling hard to try to turn a little bit of money into a lot is that once they get a lot, they just want to turn that into, well, 10 times a lot or 100 times a lot. And they usually end up broke. Um, people who are trying to win their way to a sweet live poker tournament like the Party Poker Millions live tournaments, nothing wrong with that again. Great trips, great venues. But in reality, part of that money that you win is going towards travel expenses. Travel expenses are, are expensive, right? If you win your way into a $10,000 buying tournament plus, I don't know, $3,000 in expenses, you're basically just eating that $3,000 in expenses. And that really does hurt your bankroll substantially. If you cared immensely about specifically growing your bankroll, you would not be spending $3,000 out of your $13,000 that you won on travel expenses. And that's what you do whenever you do satellite in. However, I understand again, people love going out and having trips and there's nothing wrong with having trips. Satellites are a great way to give yourself an opportunity to win a sweet experience. So if you want experiences, satellites are for you. But realize what you're exchanging it for. You're exchanging it for the chance to win long term because you're always going to be consistently depleting your bankroll and then spending part of it on trips when you do happen to run hot. Next, when should you play the satellite? When you are playing it for cash. That is what I was doing when I was playing the satellites. Um, I, I was satellited into $2,500 buy-in tournaments. I was going to play the $2,500 buy-in tournaments, win or lose. So I was basically just playing an odd structured tournament for cash, right? Because I'm going to play the $2,500 tournament even if I don't win the satellite. So in reality, I'm just playing a bunch of significantly smaller buy-in tournaments. And that essentially means that that's going to lower my average buy-in, which is going to help decrease variance and even out swings. So if you know you're going to play the main event anyway, because you're properly bankrolled for it, then playing satellites makes a lot of sense, especially if you don't have any other games to play. Yesterday when I was playing online, it just happened to be a light online schedule, and I only had something like eight or nine tables up, and I'm usually capable of playing more like 15 or 20. So I loaded up a few satellites and just had them on the side, played them, and uh, ended up winning them. But that was essentially me just playing additional $100 buy-in tournaments that are going to even out the swings. Um, perhaps if you are not quite bankrolled for the main event, it may make sense to play it. A good example of this is for live poker tournaments. Let's say they have a $5,000 buy-in tournament, but you're bankrolled to play at most, let's say, $3,500 buy-in tournaments. That's the high end of your average buy-in. It probably is okay to play something like a $500 buy-in satellite to the $5,000 tournament because the $5,000 tournament is a bit of a stretch, but it's not like a huge stretch, right? However, you wouldn't want to be playing a $500 buy-in tournament to a $25,000 buy-in main event because then $25,000 is substantially more than um, you know, the 3,000 that you're used to. For me personally, the way this happens is sometimes they'll have satellites to like $50,000 buy-in tournaments or $100,000 buy-in tournaments. Um, I'm roughly bankrolled to play $25,000 tournaments, so I'll play those anyway. So if there is a satellite to a $100,000 tournament, that's a bit of a stretch. Usually I don't play those. But if there is something like a $50,000 tournament, I will play those. It's a bit of a stretch to play, but it's not like absurdly out of the realm of possibility. Out of, out of, out of like, you know, it's a little bit out of the bankroll, but not absurdly out of the bankroll. Also, you want to make sure that whatever event you are satelliting into, you have a perceived edge in. And this is where you have to be very honest and really assess your skill level. If you can beat $1,000 buy-in tournaments, but you can't beat $10,000 buy-in tournaments, you really don't want to be satelliting into $10,000 buy-in tournaments because even if you are profitable in the satellite, you may have a negative ROI return on investment in the main event, and that's going to result in you cashing the satellite, let's say one and eight, but then you know losing 20% on the main event. And if you just do that, you're now breaking even or losing a little bit. So when you're playing the satellite for cash, fine. You, know, you're, you, you realize you are playing it for cash. There are some live casinos that have tournaments called survivor tournaments. And these are straight up satellites for cash. You buy them for, let's say $500. You play until however many caches they give away. Sometimes it's 3,500, sometimes it's 5,000, sometimes it's 10,000, whatever. Those are just straight up regular tournaments with a weird structure. And that's, that's a okay. The issue here is like the parlaying feature of having to go from, you know, 500 to 5,000 to a million. It's hard to do that. Next, one final time you want to play satellites, and that is when there is an overlay, especially for main events like the Party Poker Million tournaments we referenced earlier. Online sites have a lot of satellites, many of which have an overlay or added seats or something like that. And you may find that even some of the main events that you are 
trying to sideline into will have an overlay. Back to the party poker events. They do a great job of being aggressive with their guarantees. They'll have $10 million guaranteed tournaments. And sometimes they only get $9 million in the prize pool, which means there's a million dollars in overlay. Well, whenever there is an overlay, that gives you some amount of return on investment right off the bat. So if you're normally break even, but there's an extra 20% of money in the prize pool, you may get an extra 20% return on investment right off the bat. It's probably not going to be quite that. It's going to be a little bit less because the better players are going to own more of that than the weaker players. But whatever. You get what I'm saying, right? If there's additional money in the prize pool, very often it does make sense to be a little bit more aggressive and play those tournaments because they're, it just gives you a little bit of a buffer that will make you profitable. So again, I think a lot of people see me being somewhat negative on satellites, but I'm coming from the point of view of I only care about making money. I do not care about winning a trip. I do not care about trying to get rich fast. If anything, I want to get rich slowly and ensure I never go broke. But I realize that is not the case for a lot of people, especially recreational players who want to have a thrill. I get emails all the time. Do you still feel the thrill when you play poker? It's like, no, I don't. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, I don't. But that's okay. I don't think you want to be excited and have all of these nerves happening. And that's going to lead to you just making suboptimal decisions. If anything, I want to be perfectly calm, perfectly level-headed, and I want to be able to make good decisions. And I realize a lot of people got turned on to poker because they saw Chris Moneymaker, you know, turning $35 or whatever it was into, what, two, a million, two million? I don't, know, I don't even know how much he won. But anyway, he turned a little bit into a lot, and that got people excited because that's the dream. However, in my mind, the dream has always been get rich slowly, have no chance of going broke, and make sure you win 100% of the time long term and instead of instead of you know playing a little bit spiking and then getting rich so it's all in how you approach the game and i definitely recommend my students approach the game from a get rich slow mentality as opposed to get rich fast but almost never so that's going to be it for today hope you enjoyed this again play satellites when you don't care about the money and you want to win an experience when what was the second one? Oh, when you're playing it for cash and also when there is an overlay. So look for that overlay. Overlay is good. Yum, yum, yum. All right. Have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. Check out my site, pokercoaching.com. Click like if you enjoyed this. And if you didn't, well, leave me a comment. Let me know why. Good luck. Have fun.